All right, this is a quick episode of Star Citizen. Let's talk about it. A very important one, and we're going to be talking about the repu uh, reputation system. And I am joined by Shingara. So, Shingara, what do you do in the organization? Hello. Uh, yes, my name is Shingara. I am the head of salvage and cartography towards salvaging. So that involves finding wrecks, uh, finding dead satellites, gaining information on such satellites, and the coordination of teams to reclaim those objects. Yep, exactly. If you don't know what organization this is, this is the Death Corp Strike Unit. Um, look us up on the RSI website to find out more. So, today we're going to talk about the reputation system. So, Shingara, since you are very knowledgeable when it comes to these sort of things, how would you like to take us out the hangar? Um, first, I think we need to do a disclaimer that uh, the plans for reputation are fluid, but we know some things are set in stamp. Um, the main reputation system is your personal reputation system, and from that become other things. Is there any specific information on those categories you'd like to know? Right, so um, let's let's start off with um, the, the ba very basic version of which is bad reputation such as you know you want to gain a bad reputation for piracy, smuggling, that sort of stuff. And on the other side of the fence we have good reputation such as gaining influence with the UEE and other things such as this and then the gray area. So let's let's start off with bad reputation and we can move our way up the ladder. Well the, there's only really one bad reputation. Um, the rest are series of gray. So the only really bad reputation is the criminal system where you get a ranking of criminal rating one to four at this current moment in time. Yeah. Well, I, I, what I find interesting is, you know, maybe if you do like, you know, well, you'll be obviously gaining more of a criminal status if you were to do these sort of things, but it may, op may also open up doors for maybe mission givers who are more p swinging towards the more illegal activities in the game, you know, such as transporting drugs and things like this, or recovering stolen well, property, basically, and stealing and things like that, you know what I mean? Well, I think something you've got to realize is that uh, what could be legal in one system might not be illegal in another system. And then also you've got to realize that just because you are the UEE, are working for the UEE because technically can't be in the military anymore. Yeah, yeah. You could be working and doing jobs for the UEE and thinking you're a good guy. But there are militias and planets that are independent of the UEE who might tolerate the UEE, but if you have a really high reputation with the UEE, they may not look favorably upon you. Yeah, yeah. so people like uh, independent uh, people, like the statue in the Levski landing zone, they're very much, uh, their history was basically about independence and things like this. Yeah, that was after a tragedy that happened there. I think it was a civil uprising and the UEE basically didn't come in to help. So they basically said, if the UEE isn't helping us, we're claiming independence. So they don't look favorably, favorably on the UEE, but they're not opposed to the UEE. Yeah. And then yeah. you have the other factions in the game, like the Zion and the Banu. So if you can imagine, you're going to have a reputation for every NPC in the game. It might not be a visible reputation, like if you think in the terms of World of Warcraft, where you opened up your character pane and you went to your reputation tab and you saw a full list of who you had reputations with. I don't think that's going to be the case. But if you like, you could say you could do a job for one guy, um, and there's another guy somewhere in the universe that absolutely hates him. So you, without you knowing it, you could do a job for this one guy, and then the other guy might not like it as much. Exactly. Exactly. Like, and like... then, um, on top of that, the actual reputation system, you've got your own personal reputation system, you've got your group reputational system, and then you've got your organization reputational system. Um, so, you could be a really bad criminal, but if you are a really good miner, you've got your criminal reputation, you've got your professional reputation at the same time. Yeah. And these reputations, they can impact on each other. Like, I know the, um, if you have maybe a really good reputation 
say, with passenger transport, the second you get a criminal reputation, you're jeopardizing that. Well, you you jeopardize you could be jeopardizing it in UE space, um, but it's like what I went to before. Something that's illegal in one system might not be illegal in another. So you could be looked down upon in one system, but they don't care in another system. So you yeah. could, like, if you're transporting weapons, it could be illegal to transport these weapons through, like, say, terror. So you get criminal system for transporting these weapons through terror, but where you're taking them to, you could be breaking a barricade and supplying um, arms to these people that are trying to fight off pirates. But technically, you are an arms dealer. Yeah, exactly. And um, one, I, one thing I also find interesting is the ship dealerships in game some of them will require a clean criminal record and a outstanding reputation with with basically the the, the main governing force like you know like the ue like the origin for example if you have any kind of criminal reputation and i mean any kind they're very strict about who they sell to well i mean it could go deeper than that it could be the fact that unless you've got a really good reputation you might not be able to have access to missions or ships that are sold. Let's say at UEE Army Surplus, they might not sell them sell them goods to you, or thing, or items to you, unless you've got a real high reputation with them. Exactly, and I can imagine things like interdictors and interdictors that have been basically upgraded and um, you know overclocked and things like that. You have to maybe you know have a bit of a high criminal standing with um you know like by pirate militia faction let's say who are like you know notorious you know notorious mission giver who's like oh yeah i need you to take out these ue guys at this outpost of mine they've been causing a lot of bother in the system you know gaining a reputation with those guys means you'll obviously negatively affect your reputation with other factions such as the ue and maybe even the local militia who acts as a, like the police, you'll, you'll be getting in trouble with them, right? Well, on the interdiction devices, I don't know. Uh, I don't think we should stay as stolid, but there's different types of interdiction devices. Because all we know oh, yeah. at the moment is that you have an interdiction device. The more power you put into it to basically put a bigger net out, the bigger you show up on the radar of doing it. Yeah. But, yeah. Like on interdiction, because we're such a small percentage of the population in the game, because I think it's ten to, it's like ten percent players, ninety percent NPCs. Um, so like you could put a, say you were putting an interdiction device down, um, trying to stop a pirate. It's not just uh, of course he and everyone else that's jumping through these places. You got Zion and you got Banu sending commercial vessels through. If you accidentally interdict a Zion cargo vessel oh you're in, oh, you're in deep trouble you could impact what happens no matter now we don't know how in depth the uh, conversation system will be with npcs you you might be able to just go sorry accident you're the wrong person but yeah, yeah. we don't know how deep that's gonna go yeah exactly i'm hoping that it, it goes to a level of at least where you have maybe some options to choose like a, maybe a, a wheel will pop up of you know what you want to say or anything like that even where yeah. um, you can basically say you know sorry it was our accident and then depending on how they would take it they maybe might say, say some Zion or Zion insult and then just take off and that'll be alright or they might just you know open a fire on you because you are the wrong in the wrong you stop them well, I mean, you might not even get an option. The, uh, if there's a transport coming through, it's got guards. The lot, the guards might just automatically attack you because they assume you're pirates. Yeah, exactly. But, I think, I think doing interdiction on its own will be a criminal activity. Yeah. yeah. Well, uh, that depends though, because there is the um, the peacekeeper variant of the Idris, which is built for interdiction, and so is the Polaris. Yeah, and I think that goes to you. I think that could be mission based. Yeah. yeah. Uh, like, if you have a mission to go do it, then you've got an excuse for doing it. If you're just randomly doing it, I think that's where you get into a great area. Yeah, exactly. But, exactly. Um, on the conversation, they're really pushing faceware um, at the moment. And they just did a really good interview. If anybody wants to look at that, it's on the and Reddit. Um, but 
episode the uh, air control, you know, with the say come in, landing oh, control, yeah, come in, was amazing. Was like somebody comes up on a screen. I think that's how we're going to interact with NPCs and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. And another point that we should point out is that reputations aren't static; they degrade over time. Yeah, yeah. Um, but that is also something I'm not fully aware of um, if it's a universal thing because some reputations that might be good might degrade but I don't know if you have a bad reputation with something if as that degrades over time yeah well the way the way I see it is I think it will be hard to keep like a really good say reputation say, let's just say example here um, you've been doing missions for maybe a contact who is a part of the UEE and you've been basically doing things like maybe the UEE is too thinly stretched in an area so hence opens up missions you run crates for them, do missions uh, get rid of this militia force hero causing a problem to the, to the locals all this sort of stuff and uh, say you've built up quite a reputation if you were to leave the game for a few months I'm pretty sure that reputation would it's just like in real life where if you are the best at something and you you leave it a long time and there's loads of other people who are doing these things your reputation's going to go down the standards may go up and things like this i don't think that will be the case i don't think if you log off and just don't play for a year and then come back all your reputations are neutral i think mm. it's going to be time based on play time uh... the way insurance works yeah. So, like, when people look at their packages and it says, like, you got six months, three years insurance, that is based on in-game time. It's not based on real time. But as we know, time flies when you're having fun, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, um, we can slightly touch on the insurance side of things here, um, just briefly. So, uh, lifetime insurance. So, to, the, our, to our viewers here. Would you please clarify what lifetime insurance is and how it works on ships and what it in actually covers? Lifetime insurance is a OSHI type of insurance. It, um, what it means is you will always have, with uh, air quotes about around that, the insurance on the base package that you have bought. Now, that means that you don't have to insure any. That you don't have to insure the base of the ship. But if you get upgrades or any other type of things to your ship or you've got cargo on it you will have to uh, insure that separately exactly. but you can lose your LTI insurance if you are found to be fraudulently claiming ships exactly and um, another thing on the insurance side of things is if you're reckless with your ship and I, I remember uh, Tony Z talking about this if you're reckless and you crash your ship, no, actually, I think it was an attempt for the chairman with uh, Chris Roberts, and you crash your ship over and over again, there will be a waiting time, say, but you know, before you'll eventually get your ship back. A bit like what there is now, but it'd be more in depth. And if you're really reckless and you keep losing your ship, then it will push back, like you're, you'll be put back in the queue, and someone who's maybe only lost their ship once will be put in front of you, in the queue of when you get your ship back. Uh, you have actually uh, convoluted a couple of things in there. Um, what Tony Z were on about in that time for the chairman was if people are kamikaze yeah, yeah, then they could lose their LTI. Oh yeah. Um, no. And oh. then there was another side onto that, which was late time for the chairman where somebody asked about LTI. And it was if you're a bad pilot, let's say, um, but you're not being fraudulent, the more that you um, have accidents, then yes, you will wait longer for a ship to be refit refitted because other people are going to be in front here because they might only have claimed one ship in a year. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. That's what I mean. Like, let's say there's, uh, I'm, I'm definitely assuming the larger ships are going to have a lot longer respawn time before you get oh, them boy. back, right? Because, because didn't they mention? How the nodes, and I'm not sure if this still stands, but how nodes and everything all affects how long it takes you to get your ship back. If, if... That depends on, uh, like, the large ships, like Idrises and stuff like that, they're going to take a long time exactly. to uh, exactly. be returned to you. But I think it also depends on where you are to reclaim an Idris. If you are at the 
planet that makes Idris is, you might be able to get an Idris back faster than if you're at the, the other end of space somewhere. and you reclaim there, because obviously the transport and everything has yeah. got to be yeah. stuck into contention. Exactly. And um, what was it they said where if, okay, say there's a factory, and I think I, I did a video on this a year ago, where there's, they, Chris Roberts showed that they had a few a factory somewhere, say, that produces missiles, and, um, you know, it supplies the local places with missiles that players go to, res like, resupply. If there's an event, and pirates come along and basically stop the flow of resources getting there, there will be a mission that'll pop up for mercenaries to you know, eliminate the pirates to help the flow of cargo continue. But if there isn't any mercenaries, the factory will not receive the supplies it needs to make the missiles, the price of the missiles will go up, and eventually the supply will become very limited. Well, that's where the uh, the NPCs come into action. The NPCs will try to negate uh, any shortages, but that's where also the trade comes into it. That's where the... Uh, where, like, where the main people who just want to run cargo back and forth, that's where they're going to make their profit. They're going to be looking out for where there's shortages and where they can get their cheapest components. And then they've got to judge in their own mind the risk to reward of actually getting the raw materials exactly. to that exactly. factory. But the, uh, the way the star map is set up, there's multiple ways to get to different places. So... You, you, it, into that comes you might make more profit running a smaller ship because you can use smaller jump points or you might be able to make enough profit from use like a hull E going through the large jump points yeah it's it's not just that it's also like um, choosing your jump points because they said there were, some will open up um, you know and close there are the stable ones, but there are also other ones which could double as a shortcut, but then there's risks to those kind of jump points. I don't think they will be something that traders will um, yeah. go yeah. through. The Because the time uh, sensitive, they're going to be something where people find them and they go through to try and find out what's on the other side. To try and dictate yourself that you're going to save time by going to this jump point, so then you will have a situation where somebody goes, is this jump point over here? It's just opened up. It, it goes to yellow. And yeah. everybody, like, everybody could go and go, oh, that's a massive shortcut. So everybody goes and stocks up a terror. They go through to this jump point and it's banished. Yeah. So yeah. I think that is something that is, that's going to be one of the big risk and rewards things for traders. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It'll be, um, how old is the information? And, uh, you know, how long is this jump point estimated to last for? Like um, they said, it could last for maybe a few days to a week, or maybe a little longer than that. But then one day it could be gone, and um, you know you're gonna have to take the long way around, and you may have just cost yourself even more time and danger. And I mean, there's the 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 law isn't static either. Yeah. Um, yeah. If you look at the com links um, and the law posts, that stuff there is what's actually happening in the universe at this moment in time so when um i think it was earlier last month they did a transmission and it was talking about the banu uh they were doing a trade deal and so it opened up a new trade route from banu space to terra so like that is the stuff that if people are interested they should be watching that type of stuff oh yeah well, you know, people who are interested in lore, there's a lot of it. Um, for Star Citizen, there is literally bucket loads. Well, more than a bucket. You could probably get a boatload. <laughs> um, so, yeah, there's there's plenty of story, and the story is constantly moving forwards. Back, back to the reputation system uh, with, the, with the game and whatnot. With the gray areas, I was thinking more of a... I'm wondering how it's going to work, say, if, you know... You have okay. Your organization has a reputation because of its members has its rep has reputation. Now, organizational reputation. I know bad reputation is going to spread faster than the good reputation. So, like, well, bad reputation being criminal, let's say, because it's a lot easier to commit a crime than it is to uh, do the 
do the good stuff necessarily. If you bump into someone, you get a parking ticket. Put it that way. So, well, so what what I'm trying to say is, with the organizational reputation as a whole. So, say we have like an organization of a hundred members, for example, and uh, you know, let's say twenty five percent of those guys go off and commit piracy, while the others are trying to grind. Uh, a UEE reputation and they're committing piracy in our UEE held space, how do you think that will negatively impact everybody? It's going to be the way that NPCs respond to it. Um, and, and like on the grey side, it, it doesn't have to be piracy. If somebody goes down to a trader and doesn't do a job for them, like text a job, text the money, doesn't end up doing the job, that will negatively impact on the guild. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I mean, there's other grey areas, like you could do the first job for Miles Eckhart, totally innocent. Like, I'm just using Miles Eckhart as an example, but like, there could be other NPCs in the universe that are like this, where the first, what, the first job that they're given is completely innocent. We have, uh, we've got an insurance job, this ship was attacked, we need a black box to prove evidence of what happened. You go there, do that. Where it gets into the uh graze the actual npc itself because after that initial job he goes well we know where this uh, cargo is do you want to steal it and we'll share it that is uh illegal so that is where the gray is going to come in and where people might not think they're a pirate but they end up doing criminal activity like yeah yeah it's um it's worrying um that uh, there's a lot of organizations out there who are completely unaware of the reputation system so their their members like some members might be trying to have a have a goal in mind for the game and they could be with an organization that has a completely different agenda to what they want to do and it could really negatively impact them one thing i actually wonder about is how the ranking system in organizations will work towards reputation if you're a low level soldier and you've been doing something stupid like slap an NPC, run off with his wife, whatever. <laughs> you might get a bad reputation with that uh, NPC, but it might not really affect the organization. But if, say, you as the leader of the organization went and did that, it might give a bigger reputational impact. It makes sense, it makes wouldn't sense. it? Because, like, because... the higher the ranking the individual, the more of the organization they would be representing, right? So if someone, say, the organization leader of, I don't know, let's say Explore as an example, because they're the second biggest as of right now, was to go out, shoot a couple of uh, UE officers dead on the spot and steal a police car, you know, a, <laughs> a police ship and then gun down a couple of Genesis Starliners full of civilians. I'm pretty sure that would very much negatively impact the rest of the people. Well, I think what is actually going to be the biggest impact on reputation is if you start killing people in escape pods. Yeah. Like, um, yeah, if someone's defenseless in an escape pod and you see it as a free kill, it's very much a negative thing, right? It, it's like killing someone when they've got no weapons, no means of defending themselves, and they've already surrendered. Uh, in real life, how the the you know the um, what is it? Um, oh, you know what I'm thinking about. What is it? I'm pretty sure there's viewers right now screaming at the screen saying what it is. Uh, human rights. There you go. It's like the mistreatment. Of, like you know, it's like that almost, isn't it? Really? Yeah, and the, but that's fluid itself. Um, because in Banu space, that might not be illegal. Yeah. Yeah. Because they are really big into slaving. Um, <laughs> I, I'm not advocating that organizations who want to do really nasty things just mac everybody that's going to do it really low on a totem pole uh, I'm, not, I'm not saying do that <laughs> yeah yeah and i mean there's another aspect of the reputational system as well uh I, well there's two things really one is if there is a criminal on so you've got your polaris out and there is somebody on your ship who has got criminal rating the entire ship is not going to be classed as criminal it's good that, that like they're going to be ignored for that moment in time it's when they get off the ship go to, go to somewhere then they get re-picked back up by like bounty hunters and stuff like that exactly, exactly. Like, like let's see um if someone was a criminal and they get on a boeing 747 
the pilot and the rest of the passengers are going to have no clue. When that plane lands, however, the people who are do know that that person's a criminal will be waiting for them when the when the plane lands. Yeah, um, I mean that is separate from the fact that somebody on your Polaris might go, "That's criminal. Let's chuck let's chuck him in cells." Yeah, like, exactly. That can exactly. still happen. Yeah. Um, yeah. The other side is when permadeath happens and you create a sibling. Like um, you can even make you can make whatever you want family wise, but I think most people are going to make a, ch- a child of the person that's died. Yeah. They yeah. can carry on part of the. Uh, reputation system but it's not completely held against them that they're, they're like not in a no-win situation where they have to be what they were before yeah exactly um, I what I liked was when they were talking about the reputation system once you perma die you will inherit some of the reputation so say if you have this huge pirate reputation as you know like say the grand pirates Roberts you know <laughs> let's say as an example has accumulated this huge reputation and then one day he gets perma killed or sniped and he perma dies then you know his next character will have some of that reputation it's like being blackbeard's brother for example you'll get some of the reputation if you go into that life well you will get some of that reputation just by the fact it is your next character exactly exactly so yeah, it's uh, it's some that's a very interesting system, and I thoroughly look forward to it. What about yourself? Uh, I'm looking forward to it, and uh, I pity people who think that the, they're going to be able to get away with murder. I see a lot of people <laughs> who who think it's going to be like Eve, uh, where players control everything. Oh no, that's no, it's the other way around. Not around. the case. Yeah. Now this is something that uh, a lot of people out there may be uh, feeling. The way about is they think the game is going to be a lot like eve but that's that's a common misunderstanding i mean it is you know it's going to be an mmo and um it's in space and it's it you know they have these feelings that you know oh yes uh, organizations will be the superpowers that control everything but that is simply not the case as you mentioned earlier in the video we are, we are. a such a small drop of rain in the pool like compared to the sheer volume of NPCs that will be doing everything. Yeah, I mean, there's, I, I hear a lot of time where people say it's unlawful space, so you can do anything. I'm not quite sure that's going to be the case, because in every system that has got NPCs, there's going to be factions. So even if you're in Spider, there's going to be a pirate faction that runs everything. Exactly, exactly. it's not going to be utter chaos. There will be a governing force that is in charge and ruling over the place. It may have different rules, however, though, to, like, say, a UEE held place, like, say, Spider is obviously going to have very, very different rules from a UEE held territory, but, um, but uh, it will still have rules nonetheless. Well, I, I think it can be utter chaos still. Really? Uh, we're really? basically killing each other. The difference is if you're in an unlawful space, the people who are going to be uh, policing it are going to be the pirates and the bounty hunters. Yeah. Here's a. Here's a- Here's a good question. So say if someone wanted to build up a reputation as a bounty hunter, now this is a good one, um, how do you think it is best to gain that reputation? Um, I mean, it's fluid at the moment, but I would say the steps would be, you would start taking jobs from the bounty hunter girls um, as one side to it, but then also when you're in systems, when you see most wanted come up, then you will be up like going towards that as well so you'll be building a your reputation two ways uh, and like when people say dread pirate roberts um it, i don't think you would automatically get that mission i think you would have to build a reputation up as a bounty hunter or a bounty hunter crew to be able to get that mission to go get dread pirate roberts exactly. i'm not saying you wouldn't be able to go get dread pirate roberts earlier i'm just saying to get the mission to get dread pirate roberts you would have to actually have that reputation with the thing. And then also, um, I've got this feeling that the Bounty Hunter Guilds are going to be tied into the advocacy. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Because the advocacy, they are the uh, police force without borders, but they tend to not want to go into systems and do stuff where they don't have open authority 
in case it causes an incident. So what they do then is they subcontract jobs out to bounty hunter organizations. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So bounty hunter organizations could end up working for the advocacy and that could unlock different missions uh, and different items that we could get. I see the stealth equipment coming down that road with like if the advocacy are something we can end up gaining favor with I see that as being a way maybe of getting stealth you know equipment to modules maybe however you know having access to purchase these things I don't actually think it's going to be I don't think the advocacy is going to do anything with stealth um, I think the advocacy might be a really good way to get into arms oh. Oh. see here's another thing I think if someone wants to build their pirate, uh, not pirate, their bounty hunter reputation quickly, I think maybe taking people alive would help with that a lot as well, instead of dead. Well, Chris Roberts has actually touched on this. He, he pointed out that the, per the person who kills the person um, gets the bounty. But I think it will also revolve on, I don't think we're just going to have jobs where it goes, that person's a bad person, go kill him. Uh, because you can have one person that's got a criminal rating because they've got a parking ticket and then you've got another person who's got a criminal rating because they've committed genocide. You might want to kill the person who's committed genocide, you might want to capture the person who's got a parking ticket and just get them to pay the fine. Well, it depends yeah. if he's parked in your spot. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I, I understand. So, yeah, that, that's pretty much like all we've got time for here. It's been about 31 minutes, moving on to 32. I'd like to thank you, Shingara, so much for your time. You have really uh, enlightened a lot of people out there. You have enlightened me, that's a guarantee. And yeah, I would like to thank you for your time. Do you have anything you'd like to say to the audience before we close here? Uh, no, I'd just like to say fly safe and look forward for 3.0. Exactly. All right. You know the drill. Fly safe, commanders, and we'll see you in the verse.